Limpopo Department of Health has called for calm after the province reported its first case of monkeypox. We're joined now by Limpopo Health MEC, Dr. Popi Ramatuba. And uh, doctor, let's just uh, clarify that this is the third case in South Africa. We had two cases earlier, a 30-year-old in Johannesburg, no travel history, a 32-year-old man from Cape Town. And now you are saying that a 42-year-old male tourist from Swaziland has tested positive. Uh, thank you for being with us, MEC. You've called for calm. Uh, evening, Francis, and evening to all your viewers out there. We must just make a slight correction. It's a tourist from Switzerland, not, not Swaziland. Okay, thank yes, you. Indeed, yes, indeed. The 42-year-old visited the country and the province on the 2nd of July, and he started immediately showing symptoms and, and signs and then consulted our physician uh, around the province who then immediately took the swaps and then yesterday the NICD gave us the bad news to say unfortunately we have our first case as a province which is the third case in the country. What we can indicate is that the patient it's not suffering from the severe form of disease. He has been treated as an outpatient and he's currently under isolation. And immediately after the result, we have already dispatched our team to go and meet so that we can start with the contact tracing. And what happens with the monkeypox? Maybe I should just take a second to share with the public to understand. When we do contact tracing, we look into face-to-face -face contact where if you were not wearing a mask, you could have been at risk uh, to be infected. We also look at the issues of if you have been on the contact with the skin of the person who is infected with those skin blister like lesions. We also look at the issues of your sexual partners, those who have been in sexual contact with you. And we also look at the clothing that you were using, the linen, especially in this environment, which is a, a lodge. What I must indicate to the public is that we are comforted by the fact that the staff at the lodge uh, during our visit has shown that they are still complying with the COVID-19 regulations. Most of them, almost all of them are still wearing a mask, even those that were serving this particular tourist, they were wearing their mask. They also wear their gloves when they touch their linen, when they clean their rooms, the staff have indicated as such you have the limitation. But through our investigations, we made a conclusion that there are three contacts that we are going to be monitoring for 21 days uh, closely, monitoring for any symptoms. If they start to develop any sign, uh, followed by the rash, we will definitely have to take the swabs and do the test on them. But if they don't, I don't think there would be a really need uh, for us because there is really a limitation in terms of us, the risk of uh, those getting infected. When we look at the lodge and, and uh, precautionary measures that they continue uh, learning from COVID-19. So, so you say he's an outpatient, so it's not that serious. Uh, how was monkeypox identified? And then what happens now? Does he recover in isolation at, at the lodge? Um, how is the, the tourist from Switzerland being accommodated? I think what we must indicate is that monkeypox as compared to other deadly virus, like we dealt with SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19, um, it's not as deadly as that, that one. And also it's not necessarily an airborne disease. Uh, what we usually do is that the basic principles of public health in terms of preventative measures of uh, infectious disease, even with monkeypox, we still encourage people to avoid contact and isolation becomes the key in terms of reducing the spread. Uh, because contact, it's close contact, contact to the skin, as I've already indicated, kissing each other, sexual contact, those have, have been seen as the risk factors to can spread uh, the virus uh, immediately. How do you pick it up? For instance, even in this particular case, the, 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 the patient started with the fatigue, feeling 
flu like uh, um, uh, symptoms, getting tired, then develop rash. So immediately then you have that. And the rash, it's, it's, it's like blister like sores uh, that you could see on the skin. And they can be in both your upper and lower extremities or generalized within the body or located within the part of your body. So when we see those um, uh, symptoms, we then would do the test. We must reassure the public that uh, there's no need, of course, to for panic or the least a need for us to uh, begin to think that maybe we're going to have lockdown because that's what some of uh, people were asking me. What we simple saying is that there are many viruses out there. Monkeypox, another thing is that this is not a novel virus, not something new. We know about it, we've done, those who studied virology at medical school, it was there. It has been the virus that has been affecting many parts of uh, the continent, Africa. Uh, it's only now that we're starting to see it affecting continents like Europe uh, and countries in Europe, when we see the USA, when we see Canada. So these are the countries that previously they never experience cases of, of monkeypox. Probably that's why now it is of an interest within the global community, but it has been affecting uh, the parts of the continent and it, it was uh, never given this full attention like it is now. And the lastly, we must also remember that monkeypox has got the vaccine. It's not something that we will start uh, on trial and start to come up with clinical trials for any vaccine. We do have those vaccines, they are available yeah. for those people who immune and suppression, uh, elderly people, those who feel like they want to protect themselves, they are welcome to do so. But basic hygiene, let's continue. Those who are working in the lodges, in the hotels, those who are working at the border post, we still insist before you search our things and whatever, wear your mask, protective clothing is important. If we follow those basic hygiene principles, we will go a long way in, in, in keeping the spread of this virus. MEC, thank you for, for outlining about monkeypox because I think a lot of the concern is uh, just about uncertainty, about how dangerous this is, um, how you get it. We don't know as much as COVID-19. Very quickly, uh, is there any obligation on South Africa now to speak to Switzerland and alert them to this case? Um, is, is there anything, anything that has to happen uh, across borders? There's nothing that needs to happen except the, the basic protocols and guidelines that guides the clinicians and physicians whenever you, you deal with a patient who has got an infectious disease or a communicable disease. The first thing is to communicate to the public, which we are currently doing as soon as the NICD tells us. That, and also at the same time, we need to also do contact tracing. We also ask the patient, people that he has contacted from uh, Switzerland, his home country, he has given us and, and we communicate there and also for himself to also communicate. But what is important is that for South Africans to begin to understand that the, we are still going to have many infectious diseases. Uh, I always say with also the climate change that happens, you would previously deal with malaria, for instance, just in Mupani and Rebbe district. But today we are dealing with malaria even in Waterberg, in Skukun, areas that never had malaria previously. So we're saying we're still going to have a lot of them. So for us, preventative healthcare is important, going back to the basics um, of hygiene. Also, our border post, our port health, it's one area that we need to strengthen as government. We need to support port health, giving them qualified, skilled uh, staff, because that is where our disease from any other country will enter. So if we can do that, we'll be able to prevent uh, the country from getting a, a in, infectious disease without picking them up at the border post. But right. otherwise, for now, you can't say you will stop the travel uh, amongst uh, the, the, the two countries. It's not only Switzerland. Remember, these are the cases that we've been able to diagnose because those cases presented to our facility. We might think it's only three cases. But the two cases you have mentioned, the one uh, which uh, from Gauteng and also Western Cape, they are saying to you they've never traveled outside the country. What does it mean? It means we also have got, within our community, the spread yeah. is there. 
So that is why we're saying we need to educate our people to understand about this disease, how you can protect yourself and your loved ones. Because that's the thing that we need to do. We are living within the global community. We are not in an island as South Africans. We interact with our friends and colleagues from any other parts of the world. So what we need to do is that let's just remain vigilant but being calm. Because if we don't get yes. calm, we are going to lose the focus from dealing with the virus. All right, MEC, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time tonight. Uh, yes, uh, presumably a lot of undetected cases, that one in Limpopo sounds very contained for now. That was uh, Limpopo Health MEC, Dr. Popi Ramatuba.